everyone is looking so blessed and happy. We are so happy to be here.
it to you. Press down, shake it together, grind it over, shall men give unto your bosom. And you know, some of y'all, I, I keep telling everybody I'm from the country, be dead. And I know overalls or coveralls or whatever you want to call it, they were there back then. Oh, they were wearing robes and stuff like that. But, but in, in, in coveralls and overalls, they got a little pocket right here. I don't know if they still put it in, but I always wondered what that pocket was for. Because that pocket, you didn't get nothing in that truck pocket for a robin. And nothing, you know, a screwdriver couldn't get in the pocket, a hammer couldn't get in the pocket right here. And I always wondered what that was for. And then I read Luke, uh, and it says, Give and shall be given to you, first time, so shall men give unto your bosom. And you know, some women, they don't have that pocket there, but they carry stuff, you know, close to your heart. How about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nigga watching that. And so uh, I thought about the old, old, the coveralls and the overalls, and nigga had, I found out that that little pocket was for seed. That's where you put the seed. You get ready to sow. That was the seed pocket. It's going to be close to your heart. You know, anything that you value, you're going to keep it where? Close to your heart. Close to your heart. Amen. 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 And, and so uh, I read that and I said, listen, challenge the people to give. Because as you read that scripture, it says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together. Running over, here comes, shall men give unto your bosom. In other words, so that shall you also reap, right? And, and as you sow, how much you sow is relative to how much you will get back. It's got, you know, when you when you plan it all the way through, we have got series and falling is not failure. And the thing about falling and failure is, uh, uh, it's not fair to you until you stop to get them. Amen. Amen. And so we are here dealing with falling and not failing. And when you <laughs> sow a seed, the more seed you sow, the more harvest you shall reap. I want to challenge each and every one of us today. Uh, we are dealing with our, our chosen gems 3K Academy, and we're working, going forward. And I was reading a note that I made uh, maybe two years ago. And I was uh, challenging everybody to, to stay up and pray about the uh, Chosen Men 3K Academy. And I was saying, I want you to sow seed. I want you to sow seed, Colleen, so that we can have our equipment, so we can do this and do that, and all of that. And I went back and I saw the note this morning we can edit, and everything that I was challenging us to do to sow seed, Bernie, uh, it's sitting over there in the gym now. Amen. We're talking about, uh, I wouldn't tell you how much you put in there. Somebody might be streaming. Let's go. <laughs> but, but, but the Lord has blessed. Amen. 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 The Lord has blessed. And, 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 and I, I put it like this. You did not sow enough seed to purchase it. Well, let me take that back. You did sow enough seed to purchase it. Amen. But God gave enough harvest that you could actually realize it. Does that make sense? Amen. So I want to give each and every uh, person here an opportunity to share a miracle today. How many of you need a miracle in your life? How many of you need a financial miracle in your life? Amen. The way, the way, here's the thing. The thing about spiritual polarity, the thing about the spirit is, have you, have you know, it works in reverse of the natural. Okay? You know, they say, if somebody stabbed you, what you supposed to do? Y'all like, snap back now, turn the other cheek, right? The spiritual, in the spirit, the polarity is opposite of what it is in the natural. If somebody talks about you, you're supposed to uh, just still don't say nothing bad about them, amen, but bless them that curse you. Amen. amen. The God of heaven, he'll, he'll live with you on the other end. He'll, he'll bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. But when somebody's talking bad about you, it's not for you to go to God, talk to the dozen, and all that kind of stuff. Amen. 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 So let me say, let's give.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Can you say, God is a dead eye owner? But as a seed I sow in his God's kingdom, most gracious is the eternal Father God. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this gold opportunity for this soul to yield it to your kingdom. God, we thank you, God, that you can trust us for our stewardship, that we will do what we are supposed to do with the seed that you have entrusted into the storehouse. God, I thank you, God. Let nobody suffer for their lack or their stewardship for their for their stewardship that you would bless them. Some 30, some okay, 60, and one hundred. For God, we say thank you. Yeah. God, I feel a miracle in the house today. Yes, I Lord. See somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. By tomorrow, they were like, I Bless saw the seed in that church. Because of my seed, hallelujah, I believe that God's going to do a miracle. And he's doing it just for you in Jesus' name. Everybody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Not be not hey, everybody in the back on my right hand, come on around, come on down. Come on. And so that see, we thank God for you because we can be blessed in our prayer. Love to do 
Sister Cornelius is our spiritual DJ uh, every morning uh, on prayer. We have prayer at 6 15 uh, Central Standard Time, 8 a.m. every uh, morning, Monday through Friday, and after all the prayers and testimonies is gone forth, she's our DJ, DJ Mark. She brings us on home with the music. Amen. 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 This is it. Uh, it, an event. What's, what's happening today? Football. Super Bowl. Football. 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 Super, Super Bowl. Yes, sir. Number one. Oh. I know the wrong number yeah. for y'all. Super Bowl 58. And so when we began to think about an event or idea, uh, procedures that affect a significant shift in the current manner of doing or thinking about something, an event, a lot of times we call it a game changer. You know, on uh, Super Bowl 58 today, some things are happening, you know, uh, even though these men have worked very hard, they have, uh, some of them, this is the pinnacle of their life. This is what they've been working for ever since flag football. To get to the Super Bowl. Let me say the Super Bowl. And, and so for you, the thing that upstage is upstaging anything. Upstaging anything. You would think it would be about Kansas City and San Francisco. You would think it would be about them. Well, who and what is on the front page? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift came at the football, run around, take a list of nothing. And Taylor Swift is on the front cover of everything. And Kansas City Chiefs players, Travis Kelsey, they all out there and they grin. Travis has worked all his life. And the first thing that folks want to know is do you know uh, the name of Taylor Swift? He's on. This is a game changer. Game changer. Now, the thing about a game changer, game changer kid, even though uh, Kelsey is on the top of his game and all of that, he, 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 he's 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 supporting, he's supporting Kelsey. He's supporting a, a, a star in a whole other uh, atmosphere. And, and, and they, they're not asking him who do they think will win or, or what's the what's your strategy or how have you been training or do you eat queens in the morning? Man, you want to know what do you know about your girlfriend? Yeah. It's a game changer. Game changer. Think about game changer is out of all of this, the question is, is this going to take him off of his day? His focus, his focus, you know, he, he tried to, he had that prayer and Taylor like, hey. And then he up there playing and then a man accidentally come and sit next to him. He like, who is that? He had to say, can you change it? You in your life, God will allow game changers to come. Things that will change our strategy, and you have to be so careful. Here in uh, 2 Kings 4, we find Elisha the prophet. Elisha uh, the prophet was working in the school of the prophets, and Elisha was considered a minor prophet because he only wrote a rock like five miracles, but his miracles were working miracles where you could use them. Miracles were miracles of caring and compassion. That was a miracle. Do you believe in 2024 that there are still miracles? Yes. Has the Lord ever wrought a miracle in your life? That a miracle is something that is of a theophonic of nature. In other words, it's something that is totally spiritual, totally supernatural, but it has been manifested in the natural. In other words, the doctor says no. God still says yes. Never said a miracle. Uh-huh. Uh, you, you, you don't have to seem like you don't have funds to make ends meet, but God still carries you from season to season. Never say a miracle. A miracle. A miracle. Saints of God, we have to continuously believe in a miracle work. 
The enemy, the worst thing in the world, the enemy wants us to believe that we can do it all by ourselves and we can't do it all by ourselves. It's time to take ourselves out. It's time to give up on whatever because we can't see it happening. But God is a miracle working God. He'll work miracles in your life. Now, we also define a miracle as an event that contradicts known scientific laws. A miracle. So a miracle is a supernatural, as I said, that is straight in the natural realm. A miracle is when God actually suspends those laws of nature. Heaven says supernatural. supernatural. Amen. You got to believe the word of God. When you're studying the word of God, when you're praying to God, you cannot uh, uh, rule out that the Lord will work a miracle in your life. Amen. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. So, I want to talk to you for a moment about I need a game changer. Game changer. Here in the text, we find a certain woman. And when you see certain woman, certain, that just, just, just substitute the certain woman for your name, uh, being man or woman, just a certain. You know, a certain woman. So, so I've got a certain woman. She's here at a wit's end. This certain woman. Never said certain woman. Certain She's woman. spiraling out of control. She has no control over what's happening in her life. She's expressing some feelings. My God, she's going to a wit's end. Her emotions are all out there that, that you and I may sometimes have when we find ourselves in tough right. times. Did anybody ever find yourself in tough times? In all a tough time now? If you're not in tough times, you're not in, you, you might be on your way to tough times. Now, that's nothing bad when God is with you. You can take it when the Lord is with you. He said, take the Lord along with you. Everywhere you go. Be quiet, Pastor, because you're going to need him everywhere you go. This woman is experiencing, check out, and express. Some serious emotional trauma. Have you ever experienced emotional trauma? Have you ever had friends to leave you, loved ones to leave you, turn their backs upon you? You, you know, your wife riding down your road, no, hallelujah, have left you high down. Have you ever experienced that trauma of when you have had no idea what you're going to do next? Midnight hour situation. You know, you don't want nobody to see you crying <laughs> early in the morning. And you just like, oh, what is going on? What am I going to do? How, can you find yourself in yes, Amen. Have, have you ever got all the way to the point that you say, Lord, make a way? In other words, when you get to that make a way situation, you're like, I don't care how you do it. Just do it. You can bless me from the left, the right, uh, the front and back, side to side. You can bless me all around. But however you do, I will not complain. Yeah. Have you ever tried to be a blessing to somebody and they say you, you got them you got something, you're going to be a blessing to them, and they say, I, I really don't like it. Man, did you ever bless them again? Did you ever give them anything? Yeah. You had to pray about that thing, didn't you? Oh yeah, you, you, I mean, you can go on in your pocket, take it out of your business schedule to get somebody something because you say, you know, the Lord could have even said, I'm going to give uh, this certain woman this. And you give it to them and you look at their face and they be like, oh. <coughs> well, thank you. That's Don't tell right. me. <coughs> Sorry. Give it back. I give it receive. He said, 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 he was a prophet. He went to the school of the prophets and messed around. Yes, I did. I said, messed around and died. He died 
She got two boys, and he died. No insurance because he's working for the church. Bless the Lord. No retirement because he's working for the church. Yes, sir. Amen. He, 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 he had nothing. We're going to find out what he had in a minute. We're going to be looking at this text. He, he had nothing but a uh, love the Lord. And, and so she said, listen, and, and to, to top it all off, the creditors will knock that door. Ain't that something? Come on, take my big screen TV. Come on, take my, my furniture. He was getting an honorarium, but he did now. And, 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 and because this certain woman was a woman, she was depending totally on her husband. And he dies with two children. And the creditors have come, and the creditors are saying, We want your kids because we want to make it the slaves out of them. Because that's the only way we're going to get our money back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need a game change. I need a game change. So, immediately, the woman is experiencing this trauma. My brothers and sisters, when you are confronted by the enemy and facing Hallelujah, unbelievable. Odds don't do like some people do. Some, some people that are, are faced with trauma and all of that, they, they just go off the deep end. What do they do? Some of them uh, uh, turn to drugs. Some of them turn to uh, illicit sex. Some of them turn to drinking. Some of them turn to just wilding out. Why? 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 Hallelujah, you follow home, sometimes you'll find out they don't have a home. You follow home, sometimes you'll find out they don't have a, a, a mother or father or somebody there that loves them. You'll find out what's going on in their atmosphere is so toxic. Amen. 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 So they need a game changer. So in the case is this woman has sought out the boss. He's, uh, she goes to the school of the prophets, knocks on the door, and call, talks to Elijah and say, hey, dude, my husband, your servant, is dead. And the creditors are in the house. I need some relief. Lord. Let me say, I need some relief. When you come to church, you come to church because you need some relief. When you come to church, you're coming to church because you, you want to help in the relief. Amen. A lot of times our church is not our fear because people don't even understand why to come to church in the first place. There, there's so much other narrative out there talking about this, this. All the preachers do is want your money. Don't go to the grocery store. Don't go. All grow the woman is wood. Don't even stop eating. Quit going to McDonald's. All they want is your wood. Money. And what do you get? Some stuff that'll give you cancer. You ain't complaining about that. Now. You better learn how to talk that to the devil. Pull the curtains off the devil. Because what he talking sounds, it sounds like it makes sense until you really listen. It sounds like it really makes sense until you listen. It's not, in other words, when you live in your life, you need to look behind the curtain of the words and the phrases and see what is the truth. And to say, I need a game change. This woman comes up to Elijah and says, listen, I, I need your help. I need your help. First thing you're going to deal with is uh, 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 she was a woman of despair and desperation. A woman of despair and desperation. She was a person of despair and desperation. Have you ever been desperate? Have you ever been desperate? When you're desperate, you'll sell cheap that is worth it. You give up things of value for less than what they're worth. That's when you're desperate. The enemy wants to get you into a situation of desperation. So desperate, Pastor, that's when everything seems wrong 
and will not turn out badly. And desperation is when you cannot see or, or, or construct a future for yourself. People that commit suicide, suicide, they literally see nothing beyond where they are. They can't, there's no hope there. Free. Hope so is for the hopeless. That's so why we need Jesus, Jesus Christ in our lives. Because as long as you know there is hope. Nothing wrong with falling. Because falling is a part of your success. Giving up. 
and, and, and all this, but, but, but God has something for her. She's thinking about her sons potentially to be slaves, and that God will make a game change. So while facing this desperation, the Bible says she cried to the property last and reminded him that her husband was a just man, that he did fear the Lord. In Psalms 34 17, it says it like this When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. What I say, when the righteous cry for who? Yeah. Amen. Who delivers them? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Listen, listen, listen. When the righteous cry. In other words, you have to have the right standing. You have to be in the right positioning. You, you have to say, Lord, uh, help me, Lord. I, I believe you. When you find yourself into that desperate situation, confess your faults to the Lord. Tell him that. Look, come in my heart. I haven't done it all right, but Lord, uh, fix me. Cleanse me. Wash me. And I, I need help in my situation. Amen. It's a blessing to have a prayer life. In the text, Elijah asked this woman two questions. Oh my God. She said, listen, preacher. Listen, bishop. My husband's been a little minister and he's been doing good. He's been, he been praying for the folk. He's been praying for the sick. He's been uh, 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 visiting the hospitals and things of that nature. He's been working for the kingdom of God. He does fear the Lord. He did fear the Lord. Now he's not here. And then Elijah then missed words. He said, what can I do for you? First thing, first question was, what shall I do for thee? In other words, what's your expectation? Can you believe, can you believe that the Lord can get you out of what you didn't even have nothing to do with getting in? Can you believe that the Lord can get you out of some things that you, by your own hard-headedness, got in yourself? But can, do you have the expectation? Mark 9 and 23, read that as you convenience. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believes. Jesus said to the disciples, hey, can you believe that you have the capacity to understand? Here it comes. Him say nothing. nothing. Come on, him say nothing. nothing. There's nothing too hard. Yes. There's nothing too difficult. There's nothing too excessive that my
who said game changer? Okay, I'm almost through seven questions. What has God in the house? So he asked, what can I do for you? What's your expectation? Second thing is, is what has God in the house? In other words, you got me to see I can use. You got me to see what we can do. Well, something I can work with. You got me to you got, you got a mustard seed of faith that I can work with. Let me say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, listen, every man has a measure of faith. You, you can call it a mustard seed. Here's the thing. Even though a mustard seed is small, it is potent. Amen? Amen. Even what you have may be small in the natural. It's powerful in the spirit. Amen? Amen. So, so we go on and, 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 she, and she says, here it comes. In King James Version, it says, I have nothing but power. A little power. But here's the thing. In the NIV version, it says, your servant has nothing. But a pot of oil. Now, who was her husband? The servant. She said, Elisha, your servant is dead. Now, all the thing this woman, if you read the text, the only thing that she had of that was her sons. He said, Well, what do you have? She said, There's nothing in my house but your servant's oil. Ain't that so? That oil was anointed. That, that oil, in other words, the Lord has not forgotten your labor of love. The Lord has not forgotten oh, your legacy of love. The Lord has not forgotten your, your mothers and your fathers and your, 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 your guardians' prayers over your life. In your memory bank, but it's strong in God. She said, I have nothing but a pot of oil. He said, Okay, okay, what I need you to do. Uh, John 8, 6 and 8 says this Jesus was faced with feeding what? A multitude of people, right? And John, and, and, and they said, We got all these, we got 5,000 million, Jesus. What we gonna do? And then they find out, and he said, Listen, this little boy here got, got some bread and some fish. Five loaves of bread and the little fish over here. Uh, and then Jesus said, bring that to me. Oh my God. Do you understand how we rob ourselves of miracles when we fail to sow seed? It's not how much you got. It's what you do and who you give it to. Give it to the Lord. So, despite not the day of what? Small beginnings, small things. You you may put you know, we used to train our children up to so did they have that now you put this in church? Hey Amen. Don't stop doing that. There's so much that goes along with that. You're teaching them to sow unto the Lord, but you're also teaching them what is important about the garments. Amen. 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 Don't don't rob them of that. We we're just coming out, I call it the dog ages of of of, uh, well, we, we, you know, we grew up, some of us grew up, you know, my mama, my dad made me go to church. I ain't gonna never make my children go to church. Look what you got now. Now they shoot at you. Yeah. 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 Amen. And have nerve enough to act like you ain't had nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> when the children turn against the parent, that's because the parent. You 
like, oh, the rest of the chat, because I'm sure I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is hot, but it is right. Let the mamas be mamas. Yes. Let the dads be dads. Yes. Amen. 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 I say, hey, Carrington. All right, now sit on. Okay. There's wisdom in the training. Okay. In, in other words, we remember, I said wisdom from God is called a skill set. God will give you skill on how to handle what he blessed you with. Why would he wouldn't be God if he blessed you with something that he didn't give you the skill to do? Amen. Amen. Oh, they run me! Hey! Okay. <laughs> Verse 3 says this. Then he says, Go buy vessels from all your neighbors. Even empty vessels. And buy not a few. And when and thou shut the door. He said, listen, you, you, you have the capacity. You got something for me to work with, for the Lord to bless. Now we need a container. And he tells this woman to send her sons to get all kind of vessels, even the broken ones, even the ones with holes in them. Even the one that people have given up on. Never say vessel. Yes. You know, we can be looked upon as vessels, right? Uh, uh, God has given us a mandate to get all of the vessels. Because God has need of the vessels. He needs the vessel that has been broken. He needs the vessel that has been marred and scarred. He needs the vessel. Because God has need of the vessel. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Let me say the vessel, Lord. Yes. Don't limit the value of a vessel. Yes. Amen. 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 Look at somebody. Yeah, you, you, you know, you, have you ever walked by a vessel and said there's no hope for that vessel? I'm not even gonna bring the I I'm not even gonna bring the word to them because they 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 beyond repair. I'm not I'm not even gonna, gonna, gonna go out of my way for them because based upon how what I see, they can't be used by God. But there it is, I just say, go get all of the vessels. Go into the community and get all of them. Because the Lord has need of them. And so after the word, the her sons went out and they went all over the city. See, you have to be careful about who's going into the city. You have to be, when it comes to your, your blessing, your potential for your miracle, you got to have people in your house, you got to have people around you that believe like you believe. They, they, you got to have people in the house that believe it that God can supply a game changer. You got to have people in your house that believe that even though the doctor said this, God can say yes. Amen. So here they go. They go out. They go out. Can you see them in camps and knocking on doors and looking for vessels and all that kind of stuff? And finally, they come back to the house. And Elijah had told her, listen, go get the vessel. Don't worry about how they look. Don't worry about the condition. And when you get them, bring them into your house and shut the door. You and your sons. We don't need no spectators when God is going to bless you. You don't need no spectators uh, when God is going to perform a miracle in your life. What is a spectator, Pastor? A spectator is that person that does not believe. That can be done. Amen. 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 Rule the spectators out of your life. You can have spectators when, when after God has blessed you. Amen. 
But when your faith is to that point that the creditors are knocking on your door and you need a miracle in your life, you don't need no unbelieving spectators. Yes. Now, whether the sons believed or not, they were the sons. Whether the sons believed or not, they were the servants' sons. So here's the thing, just by the blood, touch your name. It says it's all about the blood. It's all about the blood. It's all about the power of the blood of Jesus. She goes in and they pull out all of these vessels. Can you see them? They empty, marred, lean to one side, cracked up, half some, half filled, whatever. And the Bible says she begins to pour. A little vessel. And she pours into the large a little vessel, let him say a little anointing. Let him say a little faith. A little faith. Hallelujah. A little, a little love. And she begins to pour, and, and she kept on pouring. She poured beyond the cracks in the vessel. She poured beyond the mark of the vessel. And hallelujah, because of the oil in the vessel. That was the servant's vessel. Pot and the servant's oil. And they all kept flowing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Him said, game changer. Game changer. Don't discount the oil yeah. that, that flows down like into the, the robe of the priest. Down into the hem of the garment. The woman, the woman said, if I can just but touch the hem of his God. Why you want to touch that hymn, Pastor? Because there's oil in him. There's an anointing in him. There is a miracle in him. She began to feel, 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 feel. We don't know how many she filled, but it was more than enough. More than, people say more than enough. In other words, your miracle will be more than what you need now. Feel that up, and then she said, come on, Junior, you got to give me that up. He said, Mama, ain't no more. Ain't no more. And, and, and when, when the vessels were all filled, the oil, see, now here's the thing, stop right there. It didn't say the oil ran out. It stopped with where it was. He might the most. Your expectation based upon your potential. Your expectation is based upon that anointing that is in your house. She gets it. She goes, runs, tells Elijah, hey, doc. Hey, bishop. Everything's full. He says this. Go sell the oil. Sell the oil. Sell everything that you collected. And live off the rest. Not just you. But you and your two sons, can we say the Lord, the Lord will, will give me, give me double, double for my trouble. For my trouble.
But when God gives you what you need, there's always more where that came from. Let me say, I thank God. I thank God for a game changer. Come on, clap those hands. Everybody stand for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Game changing situation. There's somebody in here today. Somebody on our stream today. That you have been faced with falling. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked the other son, you know, you know, sometimes I was in class one time, uh, I was in high school, and I was sick. I get it. But I thought I was falling. And my feet just jumped up. And everybody, what's that started? Anybody else have been like that? Yeah, yeah that, you know, yeah, that, it's like, it's like, you know, you know, you know, you know, in other words, God says, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. He'll catch you when you fall. He'll catch you before you fall. But he will catch you. He will, he will give you that fearful sensation that you might fall and fall, but your body is still sitting in the seat. You might be in the bed. God gives you a dream sometimes. And here's the thing. The Lord can give you dreams. How many of y'all the Lord deals with your dream? How many of you know the devil will give you one to? Yeah. Oh, yes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you sense them, some of you sense them like real, real sense like in the spirit, then the devil will come and you have to go, you have to go to war in the spirit. You have to ball your fist up and say, the devil, you are alive. The Holy Ghost will come to you and say, this is an attack from the enemy. You sleep, but you still got some life. The enemy is coming against your children. The enemy is coming against your livelihood. The enemy is coming against your relationship. The enemy is coming against you. Why? Pastor, because you are in the right Enemy don't visit no heathen. <laughs> Somebody like that. Have you ever had it? Have you been checking your life? Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Enemy ain't even heathen on the stereo, heathenistic way. <laughs> you ain't checking that. It ain't got to be no great, grandiose stuff. You ain't got to be no killer. You can just not be a believer. Right, right. You right where he wants you. I don't need to mess with them because they start praying on me. Amen. 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 Again, listen to those of you that are first class. I want to thank God for you. And for you getting ready to pray in a second, I don't know where like, share, and subscribe. But I want to. I want to. After this word. I am confident that the Lord has touched somebody's heart. And at this time, listen, the Lord wants you to come to this altar, become a part of Holy Nation, give your life to the Lord, all of it, right now. Hallelujah. Those of you at our platform, if you'd like to become a member of Holy Nation, email us at I'm all in. At discoverhnc.org. I am all in at discoverhnc.org. Go to the church. If you like to come over this is your great grand opportunity. If you like to give your life to the Lord, this is your great grand opportunity. Come on, clap those hands. Global Partners Initiative. Why is partnership important in ministry? The principle of partnership is scriptural and a covenant.
faith-based means to effectively spread the gospel message. In the days of Jesus, the Bible say the people who received of his ministry also ministered back to him of their substance. Partnering with us is an awesome way to effectively give back. At the nation, we consistently give back to communities in various and sundry ways. You becoming a global partner will expand our capacity to help others. Help us today and agree to support to this worthwhile cause, prayerfully and financially. For only $33 a month or a one-time annual gift of $396, we together can make a difference. Your gifts are tax deductible. Scan the QR code for Givelify, Cash App, or PayPal. You can also mail your donation to the address on the screen. When you become an Empowered Life Global Partner, we will keep you informed of what is going on in ministry, place you on our Tower or Power prayer list, along with receiving gifts periodically. Partner with us today and allow us to become your extension in ministry. Well, we thank God for that word. We thank God for that wonderful word that he sent to us on today. I want to also invite you to our Empowering You for Life Bible study. Uh, every week, our pastor is teaching on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. on our Holy Nation YouTube channel. And we would like for you to come and be a part of our Bible study. You can also join us Monday through Friday for our prayer conference call uh, on, on Monday through Friday. Uh, that information should be at the bottom of the screen. I want to thank you for your stewardship as well to Holy Nation Church of Memphis. We thank God for you. As you know, we have several means of giving uh, to Holy Nation Ministries. Uh, all of that information is at the bottom of the screen. Um, you're welcome to do that. You can even come by the church and drop it off, or you are welcome to mail it in if that's your means of getting it in to us. We will be so glad to receive it at that time. Thank you again for your stewardship. Well, until next time, we just want to say that we love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for joining us uh, on Holy Nation YouTube channel. We we love to have you. You're welcome here at any time. And until next time, God bless and walk in favor.